Okay, so the new tyres are on. I went for the Anarchy Wild in the end, they're 50-50, so half off-road, half on-road. And I've also had the uh, rim repaired. Remember, there was a dent in it, so uh, that's been repaired and touched up, and it looks like new, so hopefully it will hold out. Um, so what I'm going to do, it's a nice day today, so I'm going to head out to a place called the Kokora Valley, which is uh, famous for lots of walking trails, although I'm going to take my bike and uh, take it to places I probably shouldn't take a bike, but rules are there to be broken, right? So what was a nice sunny day this morning uh, has turned into a very overcast day with dark clouds up ahead which is uh, where I'm riding into. Look at that beautiful view over there. Um, so that's where I'm going, other side of all those hills. Uh, still probably about another 45 minutes away, something like that. Um, the new tyres feel good, a little bit spongy but that's to be expected with new tyres and um, probably going to be, uh, be, be put to the test if there's any rain. Okay, special little treat for anyone that's interested in Colombia's shady past. There's an old narco house up there. Belonged to a uh, big player from this region. Still alive, still in jail. And uh, his house has been derelict for, I don't know, 20 odd years. And they're just, uh, there's quite a few houses that you see around like that. They're just left to kind of rot and fester. And um, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know why they're still kind of there like that. They're, bit ugly and that's in a real prominent place as well they should just be ripped down and rebuilt or something but I don't know why they're not say my bike looks incredibly cool and even a little bit more attitude with those tires just gives it a whole new character um, so I've just arrived in a little town called Salento on the way up to uh, the Kokora Valley um, this town actually is always on the list of top 10 maybe even top five places to visit in Colombia it's a small little town just with one street very colorful very historic and for some reason people just <laughs> keep coming here and have done for years um, but it is a lovely place I do know it quite well first time I've been here on my own actually so this is the main square of Salento and by no surprise it's called Plas Bolivar as all uh, town squares are called in Colombia and named after this man here there's his statue up there Simon Bolivar the liberator of Colombia from the old Granada territories which was a mixture of Ecuador and Panama and uh, I think a bit of Brazil um, Anyway, and then it became an independent country. Thanks to uh, old Simon up behind me. And I think the reason this is a really popular town is because it's been preserved because it's a little bit high up than lower towns that are in the surrounding area, which were all destroyed by floods many years ago. And this was all a big popular region because the settlers here were actually prisoners of war. And uh, they were... They were, they were made, forced, to build a road uh, or improve the road system uh, back in the 1800s. And they worked for a few years doing that. And once it was complete, um, then the, uh, the new government gave them plots of land in this area. And, um, and that's how this became a populated area. Everything then got kind of destroyed by floods and this one was preserved, Salento. So it's still got all the old buildings, all the old architecture. Anyway, I'm on... Uh, what's called Calle Real now. So this is the place with all the shops, all the little crafty kind of things. And right at the end, there's a stairway that leads up to the, what's called the Mirador, the viewpoint of Salento. Actually, I'm in the middle of the coffee triangle, so uh, it makes perfect sense to have a coffee. I've just thought of something which I wanted to share, which you'll probably find really weird. This is the middle of the coffee triangle, so some of the best coffee in the world is produced here and shipped all over the world. 
But what they actually do is they send the best coffee all over the world and they keep all the mediocre crap stuff for themselves, um, which is bizarre. I mean, the coffee in Colombia is actually good, but I guess <laughs> everywhere else in the world it's even better. But uh, there you go, a little fact that you probably didn't know. Just tasted it, very nice. So a little cappuccino. Four mil pesos, that's uh, a little over a dollar and less than a pound. Bargain. Well, got absolutely no complaints with that coffee whatsoever. That really hit the spot. Right, so anyone that comes to Salento will always do the Kokora Valley in the same day because uh, um, it's not too far away. And this is the main place how you get there. Everyone goes up in these Jeep wheelies. They're very typical of uh, Colombian farming, uh, but they're obviously uh, used for taxes as well. Um, very kind of authentic Colombian transport. So basically here's people now going up to the valley and um, as soon as one Jeep's full, they take off. I don't think it costs much. I'm gonna guess about single mil pesos, just over a dollar. Um, per person, but they cram them in. Usually, you get one or two hanging off the back as well. So, <laughs> so uh, that's how they roll in Colombia. So, nice way to get up there, but I've got an even better way. I mean, about people hanging off the back. <laughs> so, they, fill, they filled up the Jeep Willys, and then the last three suckers have got to cling on for about another 10 or 12 kilometers up to the Kapura Valley. So, uh, Good luck, boys. Always nice to see your bike in the same place where you left it when you come back. Oh, I've only been away 20 minutes, but I've missed it. Beautiful. So what I want to do is ride up to the Kokora Valley, uh, try and find some trails off the beaten track, so to speak. Nothing too dangerous or mad. And... Um, I'm just going to go right around all the areas where all these tall wax palm trees are. They're the tallest palm trees in the world and the tree is actually the national symbol of Colombia. And this is the only place that you find them in the Kokora Valley. So uh, that should be exciting. Let's go. This is a beautiful road, beautiful scenery. Um, I'm taking it easy, I am quite aware I'm on new tyres and I'm just enjoying looking left and right. It's turned into a nice day again, it's still a little bit cloudy. But the scenery around here is just breathtaking. It's beautiful. And it smells really nice too, it's just got that lovely countryside kind of smell, you know, when you're out of the city and the wind's rushing into your helmet and you're just like, yeah, this is what it's all about. It's absolutely fantastic. So you can see some of these wax palms now, just as we're coming into the Kokora Valley. Gracias. Okay, so things are getting a little bit off-road now. So I think the normal road has run out and it's, uh, it's turning into this. I'm not sure what's going on here, but it looks colourful and exciting as things often do in Colombia. Uh, 
and look at that out there beautiful So I've got a feeling this is as far as I'm going to get because that road looks a little bit gnarly and it turns into a footpath up there. Buenas. Yeah, so this is as far as I'm getting on the bike. My idea of being a rebel and going up through the uh, footpaths uh, is just never going to happen. It really is too rocky and um, you know, it's not allowed, <laughs> basically. So uh, I don't mind, have a little bit of a walk. So uh, let's don't go and do that.